The Honourable. The Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I uh, can I uh, begin by referring to um, the financial reporting amendment bill, which is one of the two bills that we're considering at the moment? Uh, this bill sets up a new organisation called the External Reporting Board, which takes over from the Accounting Standards Review Board and sets accounting standards. And the functions of the board are described in clause 20 or section 24 being inserted into the Principal Act to prepare and issue financial reporting standards uh, for the purposes of various institutions, government institutions and private. And Mr Speaker, um, the board uh, can, uh, according to clause sorry, the new section 27 express standards that apply to all reporting entities or groups or specified reporting entities or groups. And it's that issue that I want to discuss, uh, developing a theme that um, the Labor Party has mentioned on a number of occasions in earlier readings on this bill, that we need to be very careful not to over-regulate here. Um, the, I, I agree that we need to have someone that sets standards, and financial reporting standards are important, and I have no... Uh, particular gripe with the structure that is being proposed and indeed we're voting for it. But I, uh, I will be keeping an eye out in the future as to whether the standards that we produce are practical and that we're not over-regulating for all uh, in, 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 as a consequence of the need to have very precise and detailed standards in respect of a few entities. We ought not to require that same level of detail and prescription in respect of all of the other entities because otherwise we are over-regulating them and putting them to great cost. And I know we in this House and the accounting profession often get up and say uh, compliance costs are a terrible thing, we must limit compliance costs, and we must, and uh, overly onerous uh, expensive compliance costs are a bad thing and they are a curb upon uh, the success of our businesses and they make the businesses or the successful businesses the, the, the given advantage to larger institutions over smaller institutions who can better, you know, for whom those costs are a lower proportion of their turnover and profit. Um, but just because we need those higher standards for some doesn't mean we need them for all and we must make, uh, take care as we have ever improving financial uh, reporting standards for the most difficult of situations. We must make sure that we're not, for, the one, for one, getting them so complex that people find them uh, impractical and difficult, to, or too many people can't understand them, nor should we be driving people always to have to do to use um, expensive professionals in order to meet their uh, financial reporting obligations where uh, simpler standards could be complied by people within their own businesses at less cost. So I, for one, will be looking forward to this board, this external reporting board, taking advantage of its breadth of powers to actually bring forward standards that are fit for purpose and that aren't uh, a, a, applying the same minimum standard to all sorts of entities. Now, that leads me to a related uh, concern in respect of the Auditor Regulation Bill. The Auditor Regulation Bill, as we've heard from uh, prior contributions on both sides of the House, we support uh, that there is a need to have an appropriately qualified audit profession and that they, uh, they have on occasions different skills to accountants and they need to have their own standard of regulation. But we, we are in the process, again, increasing compliance costs for businesses. And yes, the compliance costs for um, large finance companies and the like, I don't mind them being a bit higher in order for them to have uh, proper scrutiny of their business so as to avoid repetition of some of the poor practice that we have had of late. Well, I've got to say, I don't think that the, all of those that are responsible can escape their um, share of responsibility for what went, what went wrong there by saying they weren't told to do it properly. I would have thought that the uh, existing rules would have given plenty of latitude to good auditors to go in there and expose some of this related party lending um, that was problematic in these organisations and to check whether some of the wide boys from the last time there was a clean out in the New Zealand financial system uh, were doing it again this, during this last property bubble that we had. But, so, so, but you know, having said that, as I've said, I, I don't mind an increase in standard, but it does worry me that this is going to apply to the regulation of all issuers. Because all issuers, not all, all issuers aren't the same as finance companies. And although some finance companies had multi tens of millions of dollars books, an issuer can be anyone who issues securities to the public. 
and that includes an innovative small business trying to raise a bit of money to grow. And that small business might be, uh, might be have, until the time of this point of growth, it might have been a, a, a husband and wife or a family or a couple of partners in a, in a small business which is growing and developing an innovative idea and it wants to take it to this next stage of development and that requires them to take it offshore. And for them to take it offshore, they need to get some more capital. And for them to get more capital, well, they're not going to get it from the bank in New Zealand. So they're going to have to raise it, and we want them to be able to raise it through capital markets. We don't want the only people to be able to invest money in these companies to be people who are already wealthy and then therefore fit the exclusions of, of um, the Securities Act. And even then, actually, the, um, if they, were, they would probably still be... Well, I don't know whether they'd be an issuer then. Maybe an issuer is an offer of securities to the public rather than to the, to the big end of town. But we don't want those businesses that are expanding to be, uh, to be um, unable to do so because of the costs of raising money, because they are all of a sudden t determined to be an issuer who are caught by overly onus, onerous rules relating to the costs of audits and uh, to the complexity of the audit rules that they have to fix. This is a serious problem in New Zealand and we do risk making it worse through this legislation. Now, again, uh, we're not saying that that has to be the outcome here, but uh, the, the propensity of those who are in control of these rules is to try and drive things to an ever higher standard. And we know that that is the propensity of people who are in charge of setting these, uh, uh, these regulations. That seems to be the natural way of it. The sorts of people who are attracted to sitting on these boards are, um, are, are of a mind to do things ever better. But the cost of per perfection is sometimes uh, too high. And I'm not one who wants to, to eliminate risk. I just want to appropriately guard against un improper levels of risk being taken by people who are either misleading people or not properly making disclosure to the public. So I think we have to be very careful on the implementation of this legislation, Mr Speaker, that we are not allowing the, uh, these new regulators to over-regulate the less... Uh, the less, no, not the finance company end of town, which, which, which is where the problem has been, but the small innovative company that wants to raise relatively small amounts of money. And when I say relatively small amounts of money, they're, they're, you know, they're, we're talking $250,000, half a million or a million dollars, which when raised from 20 people is not a large amount of money each. And we don't want to over-regulate that space. Um, Mr Speaker, um, the key to that is who uh, goes on these boards and the skills that they bring and that those people themselves, Mr Speaker, um, uh, are focused on minimising, uh, appropriately minimising costs just as they are focused on appropriately ensuring uh, uh, minimum standards. And uh, um, so, so that actually lays largely within the control of the government. Uh, the government, um, uh, and, and I've been in this role, and a lot of these specialist boards, we normally accept the recommendation that comes through from the, the professional bodies, the accountants and the solicitors. I think that we're reaching a point that our experience of how regulations forever grow um, where, where it's appropriate for governments of the day to say, well, OK, um, we, we actually accept your competence to do this job, um, but we want some assurance that you're not going to be adding to complexity and therefore to cost for our businesses in a way that threatens their competitiveness. So, Mr Speaker, um, uh, the Labour Party backs both of these bills. They are... Uh, uh, it, is, it is necessary that we tighten up in the uh, control of audits. I don't accept the proposition that uh, some of the things that went wrong ought not to have been able to be picked up under existing laws. I think that there has been some failures on that regard, and, uh, uh, and I'm hopeful that some of that will be uh, brought into the open in some of the litigation that's going to go through the courts over the years that come as a consequence of the failures of the finance companies. But nonetheless, uh, these are good bills and uh, I support them.